Welcome back to the Jordy Colada Show. My name is Mikey Motzik. I'm filling in for Jordy. He is on vacation. <laughs> Thank um, you, Mikey. I love it. Travis, the, that guy, the gentleman, that Lloyd <laughs> so, elo- so eloquently Probably great at sucking. called. Okay, well, <laughs> he is uh, apparently, we're, he's not happy with our recruiting conversation because apparently we don't know anything, but that's why we have Billy, William Billy Embody. William Billy. William Billy Embody Billy. on the show to help us with this conversation so that we don't get fussed at in the chat Billy, thanks for coming on, and please uh, save us in this recruiting conversation. What's going on, guys? What questions do you have? Let's open it All up. All right, let's it's do Christmas. it. So, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of chatter um, in the, on the Internet about who's going to commit, who's going to decommit. In the recruiting world, you really don't, under, you don't, really don't know. It's kind of a crapshoot. Um, things can happen last minute. What are you hearing and what are you expecting with the, with the current recruits that are committed to LSU? Are we going to hold on to majority of those, hopefully all of those? And are we going to get some guys to, to flip to us on the first day of the early signing period? Yeah, so I would say right now LSU is sitting in a good spot to hold on to the majority uh, of their commitments going into the day. They have uh, 25 uh, high school prospects committed. Uh, and they are really only in danger of losing one. Um, even Jalen Brown, the four-star wide receiver out of Miami, who's been kind of here and there talked about as a potential flip candidate for a lot of schools. Uh, he actually is set to sign with LSU. We reported that last night at the Um, And now there are reporters at Gulliver Prep there in Miami. Purple and gold is everywhere. So all is nice, good with Jalen nice, Brown. Nice, 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 nice. The one, the one thing we're watching is what does Dalen Austin do? Uh, does he take his recruitment to the spring or does he sign with the school uh, today? Because Oregon's been pushing, Louisville's been pushing. He said he wants to take his visits. His brother uh, plays for Oregon State and um, didn't end up taking all of his official visits and has kind of advised him that, it, that it's something he regretted not doing. So that's something that Dalen wants to do. Um, but in reality, I mean, LSU has a chance to clean up at corner. Uh, Daylon Austin has been somebody that has visited other schools kind of before the early signing period got close. Um, I spoke with his mom late last night, and she told me that, you know, we still plan on signing late. Now, in recruiting, anything can change. Right. So we'll see what happens. And if Oregon gets a national letter of intent for him, that's the school that we're really watching. If he takes it to the spring, um, I guess the intrigue continues. LSU would love to keep him. He's a very good prospect. Um, but at the end of the day, they added JV and Tobiano. They have Jeremiah Hughes on board. Uh, they're hoping to get Desmond Rick <laughs> Thursday night um, as well. So uh, they have a chance to uh, really upgrade the secondary in a big way. Um, and they also have Ashton Stampson State, who's kind of a corner safety type. So uh, this is a would be a nice to have if they end up getting Desmond Rick. You talked about the cornerback position. You talked about the backfield. I think that's obviously was the biggest question mark going into the recruiting. You're losing a lot of guys in that position group. Uh, you want to restack and you want to re, re, um, you know, get some guys to kind of fill in those, those gaps. That position group and the defensive line position group. You came out with your on three RPM pick, which we're, we're, I didn't want to make sure I made that up, of Desmond Ricks. And you are coming out and saying that, it looks like Desmond Ricks is going. Desmond Ricks is going to be a Tiger. How impressive has this cornerback, this defensive backfield group been with this recruiting class and with some of the transfers? Because obviously you still have Denver Harris looming out there, and you have some guys that are very highly rated in this class that are supposed to come to LSU. How impressive has this has this crop of defensive backfield prospects been? Yeah, it's really impressive. Um, you mentioned Desmond Ricks. Uh, I put my on three RPM pick in for him. He's somebody that we went into the month of December saying that LSU sat in the best spot. But we've also seen this story here and there for some high-end prospects that LSU has led for under previous staffs or um, you know just here and there through the years, and then they don't finish, especially guys out of state. This one, Desmond Ricks, from everything we're hearing, LSU is about to do just that and finished with Desmond Ricks on Thursday night. He's a five-star defensive back, position of need, early enrollee, uh, got great length. That's the type of guy that LSU needs to be landing at at the cornerback spot. He'll pair pair really, really well with JV and Toviano, 
Mm. We'll see if they do get another high end transfer at corner uh, <laughs> to add to that crop, of course. Uh, but Desmond Ricks is a huge piece to this puzzle. If they get him on Thursday, you can, you know, sign and steal LSU potentially, I would say, for a top five finish. Uh, they also have um, Isaac Smith uh, out there as well, but I, I think that one's trending more towards Mississippi State. And then they have Camorian Pimpton, a four star tight end out of Texas, and LSU's right in the thick of it uh, to land him as, as Wednesday gets going. So it's going to be a busy day, but uh, they've really done a terrific job of this defensive uh, backfield class. Like you said, Highland Jackson is one that right down the road in Zachary yep. that I think is going to be uh, one that stud. He just brings the wood. He's got that mentality. If he puts it all together in coverage, he's going to be somebody that could really play early, I think, for LSU in that safety room. Um, and then you add in Ryan Yates and Michael Doherty, two guys who have played for two of the best programs in the country in Denton Geyer and, and Grayson in, in Georgia. So uh, both of those guys are, are really you know, high football IQ players. Uh, Ryan Yates is more physically ready to go right now, whereas Doherty can you know, sit a little bit and, and take some time at that nickel spot to, to bulk up a little and, and add some weight. But yeah, just a, a, a really, really good class, I think, in the secondary for LSU. You spoke about early playing time, some of these guys. Is Desmond Ricks in the mold of um, in the mold of Patrick Peterson? Wow, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Is he in the mold of Patrick Peterson, Derek Stingley Jr., just come in right away, day one, starter at one of the, one of the spots, basically lockdown corner, half the field is – is removed from the scouting report, or is he a guy that's going to have to – he's super athletic, super talented, but he's going to have a little bit of development when he gets here? Yeah, I mean, I think he's somebody that needs to develop a little bit physically. Um, he still has some weight to put on. He's, he's one of those corners. He reminds me a little bit of Greedy in the sense mm. that he – you know, I don't think he needs a red shirt year, but he needs some time to add some weight to him. You know, Greedy was pretty rail thin when he came in to LSU – um, I, I think with, with Desmond Rick, his competitiveness in terms of playing uh, a high level of competition at IMG for the last couple of years will prepare him to challenge right away. The big piece here is him enrolling early. He'll get to LSU. He'll be able to spend some time with Flint and the strength and conditioning staff, um, add that weight, improve his speed. Um, he is not a slam dunk like Patrick Peterson, Derek Stingley were, um, at least in my opinion, but very, very good prospect that projects to be a very early round draft choice uh, in the NFL, at least from what we see right now. This is a major land for LSU if they can get him done. Um, not to put you on the spot, but to continue with the no, cornerback room. No, he's definitely room. trying to put you yeah, on the spot. Yeah, well, that's how it usually goes. Um, just to uh, continue with the cornerback room, is there any news on the Denver Harris front as when you can expect an announcement, or are we still kind of holding firm and just assuming that it feels like LSU and kind of everybody else? Yeah, I, I think right now we're kind of in wait and see on uh, when Denver's going to make his announcement. I, I do feel it is most likely going to be LSU, barring a last-minute change. Um, I know he's been given the green light uh, by Brian Kelly and the staff to commit, but um, I do think there might be some gamesmanship here in terms uh -huh. of trying to get Desmond Ricks on board uh, and, and make sure all those things are lined up. Hey, Denver Harris, you can do this, but... Um, you know, let's let's make sure we help this team, you know, be the best it can for 2023 if you're going to come here. And that would honestly include adding some competition for you and Desmond Rick. So they're they're working that angle of it, I think. And and that's part of the delay. Um, the other the other position group of need is the defensive line. Right. Jaqueline Roy announced he's going to the NFL draft. I don't know if he's you know, I don't, I don't know if he's going to play in the bowl game, but it seems like Jaqueline Roy is is out and he's gone. He's going to be in the draft right after that. You had three defensive line transfers consecutively or commit literally back to back to back. What does the defensive line class look like? And what is the plan of Brian Kelly and the staff to kind of fill the void um, on that side of the ball? Yeah, you know, I, I think with the edge position, it's terrific. I mean, you have a five-star in Deshaun Womack who's going to enroll early. He's going to be ready to go early. Um, I saw him a couple times over the last few months in person. And, I mean, in terms of senior seasons, he might be right right up there with anyone in terms of the quality of year he put together, uh, in terms of what he'll bring uh, to, S to, to LSU. He's got um, 
size that's ready to go right away. Um, and again, somebody that I think with, with Flint and the strength and conditioning staff, uh, he's going to be able to continue to add mass. I think he's got the versatility to play both Jack and that strong side defensive end spot. Um, it's just a matter of where his body takes him long term. Still, um, one of the most dominant players I saw all season. Then you add a, a piece like Jackson Howard, um, who is probably going to be able to play a couple of different spots. He's got a bigger frame. He could be a strong side defensive end, maybe pushed inside, maybe play tight end. I mean, he is uh, the son of a former NFL player, um, Willie Howard, and, and he had a terrific career at Stanford. He's going to be somebody that I think will take some time to develop because he needs to find a position. He's played all over up there for his high school, Robbinsdale Cooper in Minneapolis. Uh, but a really, again, high football IQ type player that they're bringing into the fold. And then you look at uh, the transfers that they've brought in now. And the, and Dylan Carpenter is uh, um, uh, out of Santa Ma. He's going to be somebody that can play that strong side defensive end spot when he bulks up. Now, the transfer run that LSU went on last night, Jalen Lee, I'll start with him, the live oak, uh, you know, former standout, comes home from Florida. He was a rotational guy for Florida, kind of, you know, didn't necessarily go the way he thought it would. He was expected to really break out this year for the Gators and instead was kind of just more so in that rotation. I think this is one of those scenarios where, look, you have Mason Smith and Makai Wingo coming back. You have Jacoby and Guillory coming back. So where are the snaps at defensive tackle uh, for LSU? They're hard to come by right now. Jalen Lee has two seasons of eligibility left. He's somebody that is a low risk take. He can provide depth. He's played in the SEC. He's a good kid. I remember when he was committed to LSU, uh, just one of the, just the good guys out there to cover. Uh, so he'll fit into the culture. He'll align uh, well with Brian Kelly, so to speak. Uh, so I think this is a smart ad. Again, a depth piece that can come in and contribute. They haven't seen enough out of Ty G. Hill and Bryce Langston from, from what I've heard. So they needed to address the defensive tackle spot. They do that with Jalen Lee. And then they add Paris Shan, who's kind of, you know, in that Ollie Gay, maybe interior defensive line, um, you know, position. He is uh, from Toronto originally, um, went to Arizona, coming off a career high year uh, in tackles and sacks. So he's got two years of eligibility remaining. Again, kind of a low risk take to bring in and, and kind of continue to develop uh, on that front. He's got some serious size and length. I think that's something that Jamar Cain really values is size and length. You saw it with a lot of the prospects he went after this cycle. There wasn't many 6'1", you know, 350-pound plugs um, that he was going after. They were all the 6'5", you know, 290, 280 uh, type of players. Braden Swinston is a, a reunion of sorts. Jamar Cain recruited him when he was mm -hmm. at Arizona State. He goes to Oregon, out of Georgia, wants to get closer to home. He's going to be somebody that comes in at that jack position and battles right away as well. Um, again, maybe a position where the, a fresh start really helped. Um, and I think they're not done at defensive tackle, and uh, we'll see how things go with Nicholas Harbour in the late signing period as well. That's what I was about to ask. That's what I was getting right to him because that guy <laughs> is an absolute freak show, right? Like he is, uh, he's what, 6'5 or 6'6, 225 pounds, and he plays – I mean, I guess he could play anywhere, right? He's a tight end. He's a defensive end, but he's also a, a track star. He ran a 10.2, meter dash at six foot six, 225 pounds. What about him? I mean, obviously he is. It's going to be a late signee, right? No he's doubt. But like, guy. what is it? What is the what is the conversation about him? Obviously, his talents there. He's kind of a unicorn. But what is the projection on him? Where is he going to play? I know he likes to play some offense, but he is really good on defense. He's super athletic. What are you hearing about him? Does LSU, they're in the mix, but they have a legitimate shot of getting him. Yeah, Nicholas Harbour, I mean, one of my favorite prospects in the country. And uh, funny story, you know, my wife hears me, you know, working and talking to these kids <laughs> and about these kids all the time. She ran track in college, so she's he's uh, her number one uh, recruit that she wants to see course, with LSU. Course. Uh, a 10 to 800 meter. Time. Is, I mean, it. that is just sick. Uh, it, it's unbelievable the type of athleticism that he'd bring to any college. And with, you know, him having Olympic um, aspirations, I think LSU is squarely in the mix for this one still. And if you follow his recruitment, 
LSU is one of the schools that has been there from the get-go. Michigan, I would put in that category. Um, South Carolina, I'd put in that category. But then we've seen Maryland, Georgia, even Miami and USC to an extent make their moves in. Maryland hosted them for an official visit. Georgia, I think, is one to watch here uh, in the spring as well. But LSU is a school he has always wanted to visit. He didn't sign early, and a lot of people think that is in part uh, because he really wants to visit LSU. The track program, you've got to give them a ton of credit for the way they've recruited him. Um, you've also had Jamar Kane leading the way on that one. Um, they think he can play edge. They think he can play tight end. He can also run track and do all the things he wants to do. I think LSU squarely in the mix for this one. We'll see. I think it could get a little wild. Uh, but look, they've been on his list to visit for a long, long time. And at least LSU didn't blow its official visit uh, during the fall. Now they're going to get a chance to be one of the only programs to have him on campus in January. Love that. And how much do you think that, um, obviously, LSU being a world-renowned like track school, how much do you think that that plays a part in him wanting to be at LSU when you compare other schools? What? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Continue. Yeah, I, I I think that I think that's a big piece. I, I really do. I mean it's it's hard for, you know, some of these other programs that are recruiting him and, and things like that to really pitch, okay, you're gonna get developed here and you're gonna, you know, go to the Olympics. I mean his parents uh are I believe are both NASA engineers, um, or at least one of them is and Jeez. I think maybe the other is ph pharmacist. So this is a family that is very bright. Uh they've had um uh, he has a sibling that I believe plays volleyball at Penn State, but I could be wrong on that that college. But uh, this is a family of athletes, a family that's very, very bright. They're going to do their research. They are well-researched. Um, and I, I think the track program is absolutely going to factor in there as well. Have you ever seen a tight end slash defensive end become a uh, a track star? Not And not a thrower of anything, a, an actual runner on the track. Like, this guy is a tight end and a defensive end, but he's literally talking to schools based off of his track prowess. Like to me, that's just that you don't ever, um, I've never heard of that. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. I'm not in the recruiting game, but I mean, I, I think that's a, that's a he's rare a thing. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty rare. I mean, I'm trying to rack my brain as you were talking. I wish you would have kept going. Some <laughs> of, uh, I mean, the only guy that I can really think about it would maybe be like uh, Vernon Davis, like, a guy who had that type yeah, of speed, I, but that's it. Yeah, Vernon Davis is the guy that comes to mind in terms of freak shows that, that have played tight end. And, uh, you know, Vernon, I mean, I, I actually got to know him really well when he, when I was with the, the uh, Redskins doing some ops work for them earlier. And, I mean, he's somebody that was almost like maxed out when he you know went to Maryland and all that. But he was still a freak show and went on to have a great NFL career. Nicholas Harbor is just kind of – tapping that into that potential he yeah. doesn't he almost doesn't really know what he's doing out there um i would yeah i would i would not necessarily compare his game to vernon's but in terms of that freakish nature um uh, that that's yeah. kind of what nicholas harbor is um oh, go ahead. real quick go ahead. just to continue on the harbor front obviously he had some interest in playing tight end like almost throughout the year where he was a defensive end and he's like i want to see the offensive side of the ball with the news about Pimpton maybe committing to LSU or kind of being on flip watch from Vanderbilt, does that affect his recruitment at all? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think this is this is still uh, a position where you just kind of have to hang in there and uh, keep recruiting him. I don't think it's going to be a position that is impacted if they land more in Pimpton. Um, I, I don't think it's something that you know he looks at Jackson McGohan and and Mac Markway and, and, and gets worried as well. I think Nicholas Harbour is very confident in who he is and, and what he can bring to the table. Uh, I, I think this is just going to be one of those recruitments where I think you can almost kind of throw depth charts out the window in yeah. a way uh, because clearly, you know, LSU stuck in it despite bringing in tight ends, despite having Mason Taylor. Um, you know, he knows that there's opportunities to be won in terms of playing time at both edge and tight end. Um, and I think it's more based on trust, and that's why uh, he's ha he's kept LSU in there as the trust he has with the staff. Billy, I appreciate you coming on. I have a couple more questions if you have if you have time for us. Um, Let, let's go. Perfect, great. So I am I am I, I I'm on the internet. I live on the internet. I'm on Twitter. I look through these types of things. The rumor around some of the other 
recruiting experts, so to say, is that there's going to be a, and this may not be necessarily for LSU, but just just the recruiting world in general, there's going to be a lot of shakeup um, in the, with the quarterback position in the recruiting world. There's going to be a lot of surprises today. That's what the prediction is. Are you hearing that? Is there something that a, a high level quarterbacks that are committed somewhere could, could flip and go somewhere, somewhere else that people weren't expecting? Or is that just the internet being the internet and, and duping me like they always do? Mm, boss tech sports. Yeah, I know. I, I think, um, I think the one quarterback we're kind of all watching right now is really, um, Austin Novastad. Uh, he might've already done it already, but I expect him. Let me see. Um, I expect him to end up at, uh, Oregon. He's been committed to Baylor for a long time. Um, and look, his is, yep, he uh, flipped about an hour ago. So there I think go. that was the big piece of fireworks today um, on the quarterback position it was Oregon flipping him away from Baylor, uh, which now sits in a pretty crazy spot um, with their quarterback room having just one um, on board. But um, yeah, I think that was the big one uh, for the most part. And who knows? Signing day is crazy. Right. This period is crazy. Um, but that was the one that going into the day, everybody kind of had circled. I know we talked about guys from LSU flipping, going somewhere else and hoping that doesn't happen. Are there guys that are committed to other schools that it looks like they could flip that LSU could flip them to, to their side? Yeah, I think the one flip candidate that we've really heard a, a lot about is Morian Pimpton, the four star tight end out of North Crowley, Texas, who's committed to Vanderbilt. Um, he's somebody that LSU hosted for an official visit. Um, Earlier this month, he had one of the best senior seasons around um, and has one of the best catch radiuses of anyone in the entire class. He's a freak. He's 6'6", 220. Um, I think he's going to be somebody that, as he develops into a blocker, is going to be uh, pretty uh, pretty salty. Uh, he's kind of that jump ball winner in the red zone. Uh, he's somebody that I think LSU sits in a really good spot for. I think Texas came in too late. Um, he is a really, really good kid. Uh, really struggled, I think, with Vanderbilt and potentially going away from that commitment. They were on him super early. Um, he's very loyal. Uh, and LSU, luckily, you know, for LSU, if they do get him, came in about early October. So they got in there early enough. They saw what he was doing in his first four games. They offered and really turned up the heat. And I think if they get him, that's what's going to win out is that it wasn't LSU – coming in like Texas did about a week and a half ago. Uh, it was LSU trying to build that relationship over the last few months, seeing what he did as a senior and, and going after. Uh, your co-worker Shea Dixon just, uh, <laughs> just reported about five minutes ago that Derek Williams has signed with Texas, obviously a Louisiana guy that LSU continued to stay in the fight for. Is there anybody that maybe they make a push for now that Derek Williams is officially off the board? Is there anybody left on the, uh, I guess, recruiting docket that they would look at? No, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I think Derek Williams was, was kind of a, a complete long shot. He had been a long shot for a while. I know there was some buzz around him saying that he might take visits here or there, but this is somebody that never took a visit anywhere mm -hmm. uh, outside of Texas once he committed. So wow. uh, I think that told you everything he needed you needed to know about how locked in he was with uh, the Longhorns. And so it almost isn't surprising that he ended up, um, you know, signing and staying with Texas. And uh, he's just one of those guys that LSU never had a shot with. But I think he's a big loss. He's a very, very, very good player. Billy, I appreciate you coming on the show. I know today is a long day for you. Um, get the coffee ready. Stay alert. That's three Adderall. days. Adder yeah, well, that's, that's your move. I think he's um, at the, aren't you at the camp? <laughs> Are you still at the hunting camp? Uh, no, no. I'm down in Florida with uh, uh, my family now. So stepped out here for the yeah, work day. Patio, actually. Beauty, the beauty of the internet, the beauty of technology. You can work from anywhere. Um, enjoy the day. Uh, hopefully nothing crazy happens on the LSU side. Hopefully, or if it is, hopefully it's a good way. And uh, appreciate you coming on, man. Enjoy the day. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Have I appreciate fun. you.